Okay, welcome to 96 Words Open Hours, episode 79. I, I, you may notice right now that I am in a little bit of a different setting here. I am in Japan right now, uh, more accurately in Yokohama, which is uh, the kind of where Tokyo is. It's slightly southwest of Tokyo and kind of behind me. I'm, I'm, I'll try to do my best here, but you kind of have the, the y Yokohama background here, the backdrop. There's a I was really hoping they'd leave it on, but there's this really big um, Ferris wheel. Um, I think that's what it's called, a Ferris wheel that, that goes around and has all these bright lights, but they turned it off. It's, it's too late. It's 1 a.m. right now for me. So in the open hours tradition, uh, what we usually do is I give some announcements. I have a couple announcements. That was one of them. And, um, and then we have a really cool segment today. Uh, we're gonna be. Um, I'm gonna mess the name up again. I'm really sorry. Much, much, much. Much. Yeah. Much. Okay. Perfect. And so uh, we have Mache here from Timesys. There is a webinar series that is in conjunction with Aero Electronics and Qualcomm, if I am correct. I think a couple other companies. So yeah, actually, yeah, Qualcomm, Aero, and Timesys. And we're gonna talk to Mache here. Uh, about the uh, the series there. Now, before we dive into that and the introductions, uh, I want to remind everyone about what we talked about last week. And hopefully, Sahaj uh, will be kind enough to share some of the links. But last week, we spoke with Tyler Baker from Open Source Foundries about a marine navigation system that he built using the Dragonboard 410C. So um, I do plan on writing a blog about this, sharing the chat log. But um, for those of you who are interested, you can go to the 96 Words YouTube and take a look at that video. Uh, all of the work that Tyler did is available to you in his repository, so you can uh, recreate everything that he's done. Uh, I, I know I, I kind of brag about how Tyler is so good about so good at explaining things. So it's definitely a video that's worth watching. And while you're at it, why not watch the other 70? seven episodes that are up there. So uh, give that a shot. Uh, Mani, uh, uh, our applications engineer with 96 boards has released a new blog on automotive grade Linux. So by visiting 96boards.org forward slash blog, you can also read his blog. I think there was something published by Sahaj around pinout and how to contribute to the pinout website. That is another really cool thing that you can visit there. That's another blog. And uh, there have been some changes to the 96 boards documentation. So uh, another thing that you might want to visit. There's the VR so, blog as well. Oh, there you go. And the VR blog. Excellent. So I think that's all the announcements that I have. Um, if you would like to see the things that I am doing here in Japan uh, with Lenaro, 96 boards. We have a booth at the Embedded Technologies Conference here in 2017. There's about, I think, up to 14,000 people attending this conference. Everyone in Japan has been just utterly welcoming and nice. It's been such a pleasant experience so far. And, um, and uh, for those of you who want to keep seeing things I'm doing, I'm posting stuff on Instagram and, and Twitter and stuff. So at 96 boards and at SD. Robert W. Uh, some interesting things there. Okay, I think that's it. I ate up enough time. I'm Mache, how are you? I'm great. Uh, it's uh, not one a.m. here, so uh, <laughs> thanks. What time uh, thanks. is it? It's uh, what is it? It's uh, five p.m. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's a uh, it's coffee or or beer time. It's beer time. There you beer go. and wine. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so, so um, Mache, yeah, I, I, I kind of gave you a little bit of an introduction, but um, it would be nice if you could just take a minute or two uh, and just let us know a little bit about yourself. Uh, certainly. Um, so m my job is to really uh, look at technologies and um, uh, how those technologies can be uh, used. Uh, how can we help uh, customers uh, with adoption of different technologies? And of course, um, um, I work for Timesys and Timesys has been a long time embedded Linux uh, house um, going back to 
2000, I guess one of the first uh, three embedded Linux houses that uh, were championing um, adoption of embedded Linux and commercial um, products. Um, so, uh, and as you know, in embedded Linux, there's quite a lot of things happening, um, a lot of great stuff, a lot of great projects, and um, um, we see a lot of uh, new products coming out with uh, embedded Linux under the hood. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so um, in terms of uh, introduction, I, I guess uh, that's it. Um, uh, as far as uh, the um, technology is concerned, I would like to talk maybe about it in a context of this webinar series that we're doing. Excellent. Yeah, I, I, I have a couple of websites here that I want to share right before you dive in. So, um, and anyone who's watching this, you should be able to find these websites in the chat log provided in the blog that gets released with this. But these two websites, one from Qualcomm Developer Network and one from timesys.com. And you can go check those out uh, to see more about this webinar series. So yeah, please take it away. All right. Uh, follow yeah, along. I actually have a couple of slides. Um, let's see if I can share them. Excellent. Um, and I usually ask uh, our guests, um, are you planning on sharing these slides with us afterward? Absolutely. Um, so this okay. is just a couple of slides that uh, introduce the webinar series and can provide a, um, a framework for the discussion, perhaps, about what we are doing. And awesome. absolutely, I'll awesome. share those slides with you. Um, and uh, the material that we are presenting is also available. Um, so um, I can definitely share the links to the slides that we've used in the, in the two sessions that took place already. And of course, there are recordings um, available on QDN. Uh, very nice, very nice. So uh, the webinar series actually consists of uh, four episodes. Um, let me bring them all up on a screen here. Um, and so far we um, covered two, the first two sessions. So uh, the introduction to the Dragon Board 410C um, and uh, how to start the development around that um, uh, product, around the 96 boards from uh, Arrow and this uh, great chip from, from uh, Qualcomm. And uh, we wanted to uh, wrap this discussion uh, around technology, but um, we wanted to also talk about specific market, right? So um, we thought that industrial Internet of Things is uh, is a great area where we see a lot of uh, of this technology being adopted. So we uh, we started to look at the requirements of uh, um, an industrial IoT product and how. Um, those requirements can be met um, in the system design, but also in the application development. But uh, the webinar series is designed to um, uh, meet, you know, questions and, and requirements of uh, uh, an engineer who just uh, is starting to work with Embedded Linux and with the Dragon Board 410C. Um, <clears throat> so we are starting from ground zero, and then we um, we are building slowly the um, software development environment for them showing how to do this and then how to start developing applications. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we have on our uh, agenda the application development itself and CC++, that's what we covered last time. I have two more slides that I'll uh, briefly go through uh, in terms of a recap from those two sessions. Um, there is session three that's going to take place next week on Tuesday, and we're going to be focusing on designing a great user interface with the Qt library. So I'm going to have a colleague from the Qt company uh, joining me on that episode, um, and uh, we intend again to um, introduce the concept of uh, UIs, how to build them, um, how to, what are the tools to design those UIs, and then uh, we're going to describe the process uh, in very detail. And the last session, uh, security is is uh, a very um, popular topic these days, and uh, there is security, of course, that um, companies talk about uh, around hardware, so different hardware features that assist with security topics. But um, of course, in software, there is a lot of uh, frameworks, a lot of um, utilities 
a lot of uh, processes as well that uh, should be followed, that should be introduced to uh, companies first um, to help in a design of embedded Linux-based product that has the greatest security there is embedded in it. So that's that's the webinar series. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so um, I, I want to remind you, if, if anyone has any any questions, uh, please feel free to type yeah. into the chat or or interrupt us at any time. Hey, so uh, you mentioned IIoT or industrial IoT. How does that differ or how is it different from the generic IoT term that we use? Yeah, so, so there is basically um, uh, several uh, standards um, in addition, and um, it's, uh, it's to... Um, put the in, uh, IoT itself in a setting of an industrial uh, marketplace, right, a market segment, uh, where you are designing the um, factory floors, where you have um, multiple different, um, um, I don't know, robotic arms, different, uh, uh, different devices that have to be aware of uh, each other and have to communicate, but also there's a central system that uh, gathers the information, gather, gathers the data, and helps with variety of um, uh, decisions uh, in the um, upkeeping, maintaining the manufacturing floor, right? So <clears throat> from that perspective, um, I, I would say that that's, that's the, uh, the angle that we at least are, are taking on industrial IoT. I feel that you could kind of brand many vertical markets in that way, uh, almost kind of trying to, to to segment it out because IoT became such a big thing. You would say industrial IoT, automotive IoT, home IoT. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know, that's probably me just being silly, but I, it's, uh, I, I feel that that's kind of a nice way to segment it out to kind of make IoT seem a little bit more manageable, which is nice. Yes, and uh, in industrial IoT, we were talking about uh, primarily, uh, you know, the processes that um, manufacturing floors typically go through, right? What's important to them? And uh, industrial IoT, you want to know that a um, device doesn't have enough pressure in it, right? So, so it's not moving. The robotic arm is not moving in a um, fast enough um, period of time to to keep up the uh, production line. Um, to produce, I don't know, 10 cars a day. Um, and knowing that information ahead of time is something that uh, can be um, learned from a connected IoT system that from sensors that are gathering the data and um, through a gateways. Uh, we actually looked at the um, 410C as a um, as a board that uh, plays the role of a gateway, right? So a concentrator that gathers the information from different uh, uh, sensors and then can um, analyze some of the data directly on a system because the 410C is a very powerful processor. Um, so, uh, but then uh, those um, analytical, the analytical information can uh, be used to uh, predict when the uh, production line is going to um, need a servicing, right? Or um, the, the, the factory floor can um, ahead of time, um, you know, schedule the replacement of different uh, uh, parts of the manufacturing process. Um, so, so that helps. And if sometimes, you know, manufacturing floor needs to increase the uh, capacity that's something that can also be measured with that IoT system. So from that standpoint of view, uh, we were looking at uh, the IoT in a setting of, uh, you know, industrial. Cool. So I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the content that you have up here. Um, uh, it's, it looks very interesting. Uh, yeah, th thanks. So um, I have two slides. Um, where I summarize what we did in session one and session two. So uh, let me go um, over these two very quickly. Uh, in session one, um, we again assume that many of our uh, viewers, uh, people who listen to the webinar, uh, would be interested in 
how to start the development with the Dragon Board 410C. And there's a great uh, list of videos available already from the uh, Linaro, uh, from other community members who uh, use Dragon Board 410C to develop different great uh, proofs of concept and also products. Um, and uh, we wanted to approach uh, this, this initial out of a box experience ourselves and document that in session one. So that's uh, that's what we did. We uh, we kind of assumed that um, customer gets the box and they have to get Linux on it. So uh, we described what uh, software is included, what's uh, the structure of the board support package, and uh, what's the process of getting those images to the board. Um, <clears throat> we've also um, introduce the concept of the open embedded, the, the build system itself that's used uh, to construct the images that go onto the board. And uh, we were able to uh, rebuild as uh, part of this session, the, um, the reference platform build console image. Okay, and uh, we were able to redeploy it. <clears throat> but there were a couple of lessons learned from this session that I wanted to highlight here. Um, so, at TimeSys, we've engaged with uh, Yocto project very early on, and one of the, you know, gotchas that uh, I ran into was that uh, the Linaro BSP is not Yocto. It wasn't very obvious to me um, initially when I started to work with the BSP, but through the conversations, I um, I made sure that the nomenclature that I use is the correct one, right? So um, now I know that open embedded reference platform build BSP is not the same as a Yocto project BSP. It's the same technology. It's the same engine that builds both BSPs, both types of BSPs, but um, the structure of the build system differs. Okay, so. That's uh, one message that we wanted to uh, make sure our attendees, the viewers, get uh, and remember. And I, I think uh, that's I think that's a really important message as well because in a lot of cases, I almost I, I think that they're used interchangeably and they shouldn't be. Yes. S some yes, people exactly. just say, "Oh, it's Yocto. Oh, it's Open Embedded," and they don't think about the differences. And so that's that's a really that's a really good point to cover. I was one of those uh, people, um, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Uh, I, I got the I got the Git clone, right? I um, look at the directory structures like, oh, it's Yocto, right? And I yeah. uh, went ahead building it, uh, convinced that it's Yocto without Pokey, <laughs> yeah. and uh, then I. Uh, eventually figured out that no, it isn't. And there is a very specific name that's attached to it. So, yeah. And uh, so you'll have to watch the, the you'll... Yep, go ahead. The, uh, they'll have to watch that, that episode to, to, to learn more about that. Oh yes, when you watch it, you're gonna uh, hear me actually say Yocto a few times still. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But, uh, um, you know, we, uh, of course, made sure we enforced this image uh, or the naming um, in session two. So that was that was the key takeaway from session one. Um, and then, you know, a couple of uh, very handy information for people that are starting with the Fort NC. If you want to rescue the board, uh, you will need a micro SD, um, which is not a big deal, but, um, you know, something to keep in mind. Um, and uh, we were also talking about how customers, how you know attendees, not necessarily customers, can uh, really get uh, help. And uh, there's this 96 boards forums, um, which is a great place to uh, ask questions. But we know that um, some of the attendees, um, if they have an active project, um, they may have some reservations in terms of uh, discussing product specific questions. So we also have a ticket based uh, way to to have this type of conversations. So real quick on the um, I, I hope I don't throw any wrenches in the gears here, uh, but so I 
I feel that I've rescued a dragon board and I, I could be wrong, but I feel that I've rescued a dragon board using fast boot before by flashing on the, the, uh, binaries with, uh, that are the, the Qualcomm provided binaries and then going yeah. through the, uh, boot image and, and, uh, and, uh, root FS image. Um, yes. so is, is the SD card the only way or, or can you also do it through the fast boot? Cause I feel I've. So, so there's fast boot involved in this process, but if you, uh, ever get into a situation where the first level bootloader, the little kernel gets corrupted, uh, and, uh, on the device itself, um, the, um, the fast boot, uh, command is not going to see the device itself. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, there, there is actually a rescue as SD card image available on the 96 boards uh, download site uh, that includes that little kernel. And uh, with that, um, as long as it's in, in memory, you're going to be able to connect it through a micro USB or through a USB port to your host. And then you can use the fast boot command to flash the images. But um, um, I know from some of my colleagues who um, had customers um, with that particular scenario where the board was um, really host that um, they needed to rescue um, everything, including the SPL. I'm sorry, the first le level bootloader, the little kernel. Very nice. Maybe I just haven't messed my board up enough yet. Yeah. So. Well, so if you have a, a little kernel up and running, no problems, then uh, of course you can just press one of the buttons. I think it's um, uh, the S4 or S3 button. I see already escaped me. Um, and while no, it's holding okay. it, you can fire up the board. Yep. Yeah, it's the minus, the minus button, um, but I think that's the, the S4. Button. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that, that's the process that uh, we've used in session two to um, uh, deploy the modified images uh, because we already had um, gone through the process of rescuing the board. And in session two, we could uh, focus on uh, <clears throat> what it takes to customize the BSP, uh, which is not a simple topic. Um, mind you that each session is 45 minutes plus um, 15 minutes for Q&A. And that's not enough time to um, really cover some of these um, hard topics, right? So um, in session two, we uh, we talked about meta layers, we talked about recipes, um, and we started to uh, develop application code, which uh, was written in C, the application code, which was um, uh, registering or uh, collecting the information from remote sensors. We had a couple of uh, sensor boards in our uh, office here, um, sensors that were, or sensor boards that were connecting to the Dragon Board Port NC via Bluetooth Low Energy. And uh, using the um, one of the Bluetooth Low Energy uh, protocols, um, the, the GAT protocol, um, we were collecting information from different sensors. Uh, I think I picked uh, temperature, uh, free fall, and uh, oh, they, they actually on the slide here, and the luminosity. Um, and uh, that information was going over the GAT protocol to uh, um, the Dragon Board to Linux, where um, the application with an NC was able to uh, recognize the changes in luminosity or temperature of, or, or that the device was free falling and um, um, make a decision, right? Decision could be, oh, I need to start an um, alert of sorts, uh, too bright mm. uh, light for a, a manufacturing process. Uh, but in this process to uh, develop this software, to develop this application, we needed to make sure that we have the right software in a root file system and that we have the uh, well-configured Linux kernel. So um, we, uh, we we talked about um, adding a package. Um, the package that we've added was called GATLib. 
it's an open source um, project, but it didn't have the um, open embedded uh, recipe. So we went through the process, what it takes to uh, generate one and how to add a new software to uh, um, open embedded RPB BSB. And then we, of but course, you... added that. Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was going to say, so so you went through the process of actually creating a recipe or consuming a recipe and then adding it to a layer and then building again? We we did all of it, yes. And wow, we, okay, that's very nice. Yeah. We, uh, I just want to say, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting, but th that yeah. whole process, I, I went and I did a, a, a Yocto uh, workshop. And what you're mm -hmm. talking about doing to have – a video of someone who's experienced working in this actually kind of exercising it and giving instructions uh, on how to recreate it. I, I think that this is something that's much needed right now because the, the process is not always so straightforward. And in a lot of cases, you, it gets convoluted with everything that's going on in, in open embedded. And I, I'm, I'm now, I see now I'm kind of interchanging the words. <laughs> I did a Yocto workshop but yeah referring to open embedded so <laughs> yeah that's very absolutely. nice very good material and there, there there's uh you know uh bitbake itself and open embedded is um a, two very active open source projects there is a lot of um, new stuff that's being added to both um i'll give you an example there is um in yocto uh, there is um a script to add a meta layer, uh, and that script is called um, uh, layer create, I, I believe. Um, and uh, that script was not present in the Linaros BSB. And um, I was talking to some of the Linaros engineers who um, mentioned that there is a, a bit big layer script, which um, is recommended instead. But um, uh, you see the BitBake layer script doesn't have the command create uh, yet, at least. It, it actually has it in the uh, master branch, but it hasn't uh, trickled down yet to uh, release the BSP. So there's, um, th this is a ongoing uh, you know, development. And I think that more and more of those features are going to be coming to uh, the Linaro BSP uh, just by, um, you know, from from releases from Bitbake, from releases from Open Embedded, and, and um, webinars like this is a is a great way to let uh, everyone know what's available and what's coming. Um, okay, so um, there is uh, what we also did. Uh, we have um, uh, covered the development with an IDE. Um, so uh, we've introduced Eclipse as a framework, um, and um, actually we've introduced one of the uh, TAMSYS uh, products, which is Eclipse-based. Um, and we navigated through the process of developing, deploying, and debugging software directly on the Dragonboard 410C, connecting to it via Wi-Fi. So of course we uh, covered also what it takes to set up a TCP IP connectivity through a wireless connection. Am I still connected or? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, <clears throat> so, I uh, just wanted to mention that there are two more sessions uh, I don't have uh, information on the next two sessions. Let me uh, scroll back to the agenda and talk a little bit about session three that's uh, scheduled for this Tuesday. Um, so in this session, we plan on um, introducing QT as a package. Um, we're planning on talking about a little bit about licensing um, of a QT stack and how to use it in a in a device, how to uh, get your hands dirty. Um, and that means develop code in C++, but also um, the, this uh, QT specific coding language called QML is going to be introduced. Um, and then the idea is that we can show how, to, how easy it is to develop a, a modern user interface 
and uh, the fact that the 410C has a very powerful graphics capability is something that we want to highlight. So, uh, uh, you know, different animated behaviors on a screen, um, things that in industrial uh, setting, uh, you, you can think of a control panel on the device that, um, that uh, has plenty of sensors and uh, the 410C is the central piece of that um, robotic arm. And that would be, of course, uh, the panel that um, allows the user to um, uh, either view uh, the data arriving from sensors or, uh, you know, stop the device altogether. But um, we're assuming that there would be some sort of a screen connected. Uh, so we are very excited about that session number three. Um, and in session number four, we want to talk about security because uh, I don't, I don't know how uh, much you see this topic coming up in your discussions. Um, we at times you see a lot of security questions, a lot of security um, uh, designs. And when I'm talking about designs, I mean um, starting with uh, secure boot, um, signing authentication of images, um, encryption of images. Um, but also um, we talk a lot about uh, what needs to happen once the device is released, right? So security is not something that you do once and uh, you're done. Security is an ongoing challenge, and we talk about how customers can um, can really build that uh, ongoing security into their development process, development and maintenance. Um, and the fourth and she has uh, many, many great. Um, security features, which we plan to uh, to talk about as well. So that's that's the webinar in in, uh, in short. Sorry, I <laughs> wanted to show you the slides. I assume that this is going to be a um, good, uh, good thing to kind of frame the questions and discussion around. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I'm actually pretty excited about QT um, kind of does give you a graphical performance. So it's one of those frameworks that where you can use the GUI and still, you know, you directly using X, uh, Xox sometimes does not give you the uh, advantage of, you know, uh, running your applications on the GPU. Mm -hmm. And Qt sort of overcomes that and also has maybe Qt 3D in there. It's, uh, it's fairly uh, easy to uh, develop uh, animations. And, you know, um, nowadays everyone expects the behavior that we, that we see on our cell phones, right? That when you touch the screen, there is some sort of movement on the screen. Uh, when you press the button, uh, the, you want the button to pop out and go back. Uh, those animations typically uh, require great GPU capability. Um, and uh, that combined with Qt is fairly uh, straightforward to to program. So, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I can. So uh, you said that um, the sensor nodes are uh, communicating to the Dragon Boat C with the help of uh, BLE technology, right? So, uh, yeah. are you using any other 96 boards for the sensor nodes, especially the IE boards, which were BLE capable? Uh, which boards? I'm sorry, I, I didn't get that part. So the Internet Edition boards, uh, 96 boards, carbon, nitrogen boards, so they support BLE? Mm -hmm. No, we, we actually are not uh, using these for this uh, seminar series. Um, we are using boards that, um, well, one is uh, from uh, Qualcomm, or the chip from Qualcomm, the CSR 1010. And the other one uh, is, um, uh, actually offered to customers by Arrow. And this is uh, a sensor board called um, Sensible from a company called, I think, Sensi Edge. Um, those are the two that we that we have used. So I, I'm, I'm back, Machi, I'm so sorry about that. I think my, my hotel just reset their router. <laughs> I don't oh. know uh, what happened. Yeah, so sorry, I'm back.
What did I miss? <laughs> uh, well, uh, pretty much, uh, uh, well, maybe the discussion on session three and four, but we were just uh, discussing also the, the sensors that we have used uh, in the seminar. Um, the question was whether oh, okay. we have leveraged some of the sensor boards uh, from the 96 boards uh, family. Yeah, I'm I'm curious because in the slide, the last slide that I saw, which was on I think uh, your second session, uh, you mentioned that you're using a sen uh, a sensor board. What, do you know which one it was? Uh, which measure? Yeah, it's a it's a sensible um, sensible uh, system by the company called Sensi Edge. I think that they are based out of oh. Israel, and this is a board that Arrow Electronics is um, uh, offering to customers. And we've also used uh, in, a, in a, some of the captures the second sensor board from Qualcomm, uh, and that was the CSR 1010. Yeah, I'm wondering because I've never heard of either of those. So mm -hmm. are, are they for are they for sale or are these uh, more so yes, internal yes, from yeah. Qualcomm? No, no, they are available. They are available. You can um, uh, purchase them uh, either, I think, through Arrow for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, they are very much available. But uh, okay. I, I'm sure that there's quite a few of uh, sensor bo boards like this. Um, we we grabbed these because we had access to them, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, most of these sensor boards, they uh, speak a um, GAT protocol. And many of the um, characteristics that they advertise are also standardized. Um, like uh, the Qualcomm's uh, CSR 1010 has, for example, a standardized heartbeat uh, characteristic, um, which you know you can very easily leverage in some products. Um, the Sensible has um, quite a few sensors, but uh, I don't think that it's as standardized as Qualcomm's. Um, but I've seen uh, maybe another three or four uh, sensor boards just by uh, looking um, on the internet, and um, they all seem to be um, leveraging the same kind of approach using the Bluetooth Low Energy Protocol um, to register. Um, and then to uh, advertise the characteristics, which can be uh, consumed by um, the, the gateway or by some sort of an application that wants to, uh, uh, you know, make a, a whole picture out of it. Uh, so I'm looking here at session four, and I, you know, security is a hot topic. Uh, this is something that I'm very interested in. You mentioned, you know, the security of hardware, but the security of software, I'm, I'm wondering if you're going to go into kind of, you know, the importance of mainline and the importance of making sure that, um, you know, devices are able to be updated. And this is something that's kind of we're starting to see, at least I, I want to say, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not necessarily a, an Android user, but uh, phones, mobile devices, and in particular, mobile devices that are kind of more focused towards Android. Uh, tend to go out of date fairly quickly um, because uh, a lot in a lot of cases these chips aren't included in mainline. A security breach happens, something something goes wrong, and you know the company that has the chip isn't really pushing out updates because they're not in mainline and that chip's obsolete to them. They're moved on to the next one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, when we talk about security, uh, we always frame it in um, two areas or two stages. Stage one is uh, what companies or, or enthusiasts do when they uh, want to secure the device initially. All right. So you look at the design and, and uh, we always tell everyone that it's best to design security from day one if you know that you're gonna need it. Because um, if you try to add security later on, um, well, that is typically, um, um, that involves redesigning uh, parts of your product. Um, and, and we are starting with, you know, partitioning of a storage, but then um, how those dis different partitions are formatted and used. Uh, so in this stage one, um, we uh, typically 
we typically see different uh, open source techniques uh, that help uh, companies um, authenticate the software, that help companies protect access to uh, uh, the files um, on a root file system. So um, you have data address, data in motion, um, and data in use. Right, so um, that addressed, you can protect with encryption, with uh, of course signing uh, data in motion. There's a lot of uh, secure protocols that should be used, uh, and uh, data in use. Um, well, we have to make sure that um, um, the uh, memory is randomized when you uh, are working with. Um, very vital, vital information that the, someone cannot just be monitoring one address in memory and figure out, uh, I don't know, credit cards of a user. So we talk about that stage one a lot, and then we, of course, talk about what happens uh, then. We, we, um, many of our customers um, already have some idea about the common vulnerabilities and exposures. So this is, this is, uh, uh, there's a lot of websites, many websites that um, record different uh, uh, issues that are reported against uh, software. Um, and we tell uh, companies that uh, about the importance of um, staying on top of uh, security updates, because uh, being secure is not uh, only to uh, build a secure device. Being secure means that you have to stay on top of security um, information for the lifetime of a product. And as you said, um, Robert, there is uh, typically a, a, a gap between um, when a device is released and um, when a device uh, has to be serviced. And, and oftentimes if uh, software is not mainlined or if software for that device is not uh, maintained and looked at over time, it's very difficult to uh, get it back to a secure world, right? So we, we, we uh, talk a lot about um, necessity of um, having a security feed uh, built into a, a maintenance process for a device and how to do this. Very nice, very nice. So, yeah, I think, oh, well, sorry, go. Yeah, when talking about the security, uh, are you making use of the uh, trust zone feature in the uh, SOC. Yes, so that's uh, another area um, which uh, we intend to cover in session four. Um, we have been um, talking a lot about trust zones. Uh, at the ARM TechCon, one of my colleagues was uh, actually doing a session on trust zones and how to design um, uh, trusted applications with uh, Opti. So um, we are talking about uh, Linario's uh, Meta Opti. Um, and of course, uh, introduce the technology behind it. Uh, so uh, we intend to talk about this also in session four. Did that answer your question, Mani? Yeah, thanks. Oh, great. Sure. Um, so I want to open the the floor once more, um, you know, kind of just prompting anyone in here that may have a question for you. Uh, is there any, are there any more slides uh, in your show? No, no, this is, uh, I just thought that um, having just a couple of slides will help us um, in a discussion and in questions, but I don't have more slides, no. Excellent, so um, did anyone have any more questions uh, to ask our guest? Um, I, I, you know, I also want to mention that if anyone is here uh, just listening in and has a generic question around 96 boards or Linaro, you can also speak up and get your questions answered um, by myself or anyone else on the call that's able to answer. So I got a question. So uh, since you are focusing on the industrial applications, uh, have you considered using the uh, real-time uh, capabilities of the kernel itself by using the preempt RT patch or Xenomite? Yes, uh, absolutely. So uh, the real time is very close to uh, to my heart because um, back in, I think, 2006, Tamsys uh, was uh, offering to companies um, 
a Linux distribution, embedded Linux distribution that was real time um, enhanced. So um, that technology is of course uh, very close to us still. And we, um, we are talking to customers about how to leverage uh, real time capability of the Linux kernel in a design because uh, there's always a trade off, right? Many uh, customers, um, when they, when the performance is not good enough of a device in an industrial uh, environment, they um, may think that it's due to um, um, the system not being real time. And sometimes it may be the case, but in many cases, uh, it's just a symptom. And so we look at the different knobs that the real time patch has to offer. And we also look at a specific um, uh, use case. And sometimes, you know, uh, simple things can come into uh, a way of uh, performance, such as uh, a power arbitrator, um, frequency scaling on a CPU, right, can degrade the performance. Uh, so sometimes there's uh, simpler solutions to uh, to a problem, but absolutely we do work and uh, talk to our customers about the importance of uh, real time and how to uh, leverage that in Linux. Any, anything else, Mani? No, that's it for now. Okay. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm really hoping. I, I encourage everyone who's listening and anyone who ends up watching this video uh, after the fact uh, to go check out this webinar. Oops. Wi-Fi is down again, or the router restarted again. <laughs> okay. All right, so I guess uh, I'll take over for a bit. Um, so let's continue from where Robert left, uh, saying that go uh, and check out the homepage for the Times University webinar. And uh, we have the link in the chat. And, um, you know, take a look at the courses. They have their previous, um, you know, the previous se sessions that are recorded. And you can take a look uh, and also register for the newer ones. Uh, so that is session one and two that have been, that have been already done and covered up. And then we have session uh, three and four. Uh, so I'll, I'll do a thing that Robert usually does, and that is to go down the list uh, and just call upon everyone. Uh, so Jean-Marc, any questions? Hello, Sahas. Hello, Sahas. How are you doing? Good. Good. <clears throat> I think we lost, uh, we lost uh, the boss. Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> It's look like Japan is not having a good uh, a good internet system. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> okay, right. what's well, very interesting anyway, Masich, uh, is uh, is you are doing a great job, guys. So it was interesting, and uh, I think I think we can. I, I I'm gonna leave. So it was it was interesting, and I think I think we finished, aren't we? Or uh, bad enough. <laughs> if Ragnar has something in the chat. Did you see that the next meeting in is, is in Hong Kong? Sorry? The next connect is in Hong Kong. Yes, yes it is. Yes, yeah, not bad. Mm. So Jamar, uh, work hard to be there. No, I don't think so. It's, it's, it would be a very expensive trip, so <laughs> I'm not sure about that. So. But it would be interesting to to visit Hong Kong as well. Not just not just uh, looking at courses and stuff and workshop, but also visiting the the country. 
I've never been in uh, in uh, in China. I've been in Japan several times, but never in China. And you guys? No. So Sahas, you will be you in Hong Kong. We are talking. We, do, we don't need you anymore, Robert. So we will have a good. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed, and now I'm angry at the hotel. Uh, can't believe this. So I'm so sorry, uh, Mache, about that. Um, yeah. So my, I did have, I, I had a question. I have, a, I have a question and an encouraging announcement. I'm tethering on my phone now, um, but uh, I'm, I'm really encouraging everyone on this call, everyone that watches the video afterwards, to, to really go watch this webinar series, uh, because I mean, I would imagine, Mache, is that you know, if if it's a successful series. Oops. Which I mean the cut. Of oh, well, I think you're limited on bandwidth. So if you turn off your video and view only on audio. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think Did you the, hear my question or no? No, you cut yeah, off in between. Oh, so I'm just asking. I guess I'm asking if you plan on doing more, uh, more webinars in the future, provided you know. Absolutely. Um, uh, I mean, there are so many topics and uh, so many different uh, um, technologies, uh, and we just uh, scratching um, the surface of one area of how to use the. Um, Dragon Boat 410C and um, one use case for um, uh, you know different uh, UIs and uh, security. But uh, we're going to continue to explore these topics, especially security, uh, because we we think that um, this is this is uh, important to most of the designs. And uh, just like with early days of Linux, uh, many companies may um, still be a little bit confused as to what security really means and how to consume it um, or how to reflect that security in their product. So uh, we definitely want to continue um, on this webinar series and talk about these techniques and technologies. Okay, so uh, that's that's great, and I I, I mean I, I like I'm I was trying to say is I really look forward to going back and watching these two uh, beginning sections, and I can't wait to go in and watch the next two. So, uh, um, I think I think we should close out the session now. Uh, you know, I want to thank you, Mache, so much for joining us. Um, I'm I'm making all these hand gestures, but you can't see me because <laughs> because I have oh, my I video off. Go. But I'm very grateful. Yeah, very grateful for having you on here. I know you're you're probably very busy, uh, so thank you very much. And um, is there any last things you would like to, to say? Because uh, apparently the recording kept going, so we should still be good on that. I just wanted to thank you for having me. And uh, maybe uh, in a future, I'm going to be uh, again uh, joining your session, and uh, maybe we can uh, have more of uh, great conversations about technology. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I look forward to that, and please keep in touch. Uh, so um, maybe after the series is over, we can do a recap. I would love to share any other resources that you have available, and um, we do plan on writing a blog. So if you wouldn't mind sending over your slideshow that you showed today, uh, and then we can push out a nice little blog uh, and try to uh, uh, try to get as many people to attend the webinar. It's on the 22nd of November, right? That's correct. Yep. Okay, excellent. Uh, Mache here from TimeSys, thank you so much. Again, everyone else uh, on the call, listening on Facebook and watching on YouTube. Uh, next week, I wanna... I think Sakaj, you can do the closing.
Yeah. <laughs> He's back. Oh my. I'm so frustrated right now. And so the the, the week after Thanksgiving, we'll be back. And uh, please keep your eyes on uh, 96boards.org forward slash open hours for any updates. So thank you. I'll turn the recording off now and uh, have a good one, Facebook and uh, YouTube. And thank you once again, Timesys and Arrow and Qualcomm.